What's the difference between a $500 pair of semi brogues and a $5,000 pair of semi brogues? In this video, I'm gonna tell you. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. So you may be asking, what is the difference between a $500 pair of Carmina semi brogues and this $5,000 pair of bespoke Foster & Son semi brogues? In this video, I'm gonna introduce you to some of the differences on more casual shoes, these with broguings. The more broguing that you put on a pair of shoe, the more casual it becomes, all the way from a semi brogue going up to a full brogue or a wingtip. These four shoes I have here today are all semi brogues. Technically, a shoe isn't called a full brogue unless it has a wingtip, and none of these four shoes I have here today have wingtips. They're all cap toes with broguing detail that makes them a more casual shoe. The moment that you put any type of perforations onto the shoe or broguing as it's called, it creates a more casual shoe or what would traditionally be a weekend or country shoe. Now, in this day and age, the line there between you know city shoes for the weekday and country shoes for the weekend, of course, is blurred. But the point is still there that the more broguing that you put on a shoe, the more casual it becomes. It's not that you can't wear a black semi-brogue or a dark brown semi-brogue with a business suit. It's just that that same business suit with the black cap toe Oxford with no broguing would be a slightly more formal look. We have four shoes here today that really represent the spectrum that you can have on a pair of shoes. We have a $515 pair of a semi brogues from Carmina. This is on their Inca Last. We have a $695 pair of Cordovan Strands from Allen Edmonds. We have a $1,200 pair of St. James's Two from Gatiano and Girling. And finally, far out here in left field, we have a bespoke pair of Foster & Son shoes that run 5,000 pounds or exported to the U.S. market about $5,300. This is a huge range, and in this video, I want to go through some of the differences stylistically between these shoes, starting first with this pair of shoes from Carmina. Now, Carmina is a, a small shoemaker from the uh, Spanish island of Mallorca, and they are well known amongst uh, shoe enthusiasts as really making an incredible shoe for the bunny. At $515, this is an absolutely exceptional shoe and an incredible value because it is starting to show some of the more nuanced elements of high-end shoemaking that one would expect from an expensive shoe. Now we pointed these out in more detail in our Black Cap Toe Oxford video, but you can still see those elements here with these Carminas. And that is the higher stitch density to the outsole, the fudging, which is the small indentations on top of the outsole to give additional visual detail. Of course, it is a fully Goodyear welted shoe. Uh, on the bottom, you can see that the outsole is finished, but it also has an invisible channel stitching and a little bit of advanced nailing detail on here. Uh, it is a beautifully finished outsole. And then the pattern and last design uh, all show the type of finesse and balance that one would expect from Carmina. It's a beautifully elegant shoe with a high stitch density to the uppers. It has a punched medallion. And then all of these seam elements are brogued, creating an exceptional amount of visual detail on this shoe. Going back to the, uh, the rear of the shoe, we see a nice clean tight heel. The heel base sits flush underneath the back of the shoe. And the shoes have a, a nice uh, dark brown or medium brown finish that allows you to see some of the nuance of the natural leather here. The uppers are made from a high quality uh, open pore full grain leather, which means that this hasn't been corrected. And you can actually see the pores of the leather uh, there, which is really important because an open grain leather ensures that the leather hasn't been sealed and that the leather is going to be able to be fed by polish and an open pore full grain leather uh, really ages and looks better with time. So the more you polish the shoe and the more you wear it, the more richness and depth you're going to see with this uh, leather. Now, one of the things I like about this lighter brown color is it really takes polish so well. So you can play around with different colors to create some antiquing and some burnishing. Uh, and after you polish the shoes, uh, you know, a few times or the more you wear them uh, over the course of a few years, you'll really begin to see the patina of a really high quality leather begin to show. This is a great shoe and at $515, uh, this is actually an exceptional value. 
So our next pair of shoes is a Cordovan pair of strands from Allen Edmonds. Now that's the reason that this is a $695 shoe and not a $395 shoe. Now the reason is because Cordovan is a premium leather. This is a genuine Horween leather, which is manufactured in Chicago by the Horween Leather Company. And Cordovan actually doesn't come from cow, it comes from horse. And it's technically not even a leather, it's a membrane. It comes from the rear quarters of a horse. Uh, and one of the features of Cordovan is that it has no pore structure because again, it's not a skin. Now Cordovan uh, has a cult following and is really famous for being uh, bulletproof. I mean, it is a road warrior of a shoe. It has a natural luster uh, that buffs and polishes really easily, but it's kind of a nuanced look and you have to really like the look of Cordovan to really be into it. Now this shoe, of course, at $695, is really more about the material than the make whenever it comes to Allen Edmonds. When comparing this to the Carminas, the make of this shoe is actually below the Carmina, but it's more expensive because of the material that's being used. And you can really see that in a few details that I'm gonna point out. First and foremost is the stitch density of the outsole. You can see right here that you've got these large, kind of heavy uh, stitches that's used to attach the outsole to the welt. Now this is a Goodyear welted shoe, just like all of the shoes here, but there is a big difference in the stitch density here. Now, at the end of the day, there's no pragmatic or practical difference here. Your sole is not gonna fall off this pair of Allen Edmonds, but if you're someone that is into the more nuanced differences of shoemaking and you're really into shoes, it's these details that really do make a difference at the end of the day. And the higher stitch density is just also more aesthetically pleasing. We don't see any fudging here. And if we look on the bottom of this shoe, although there is more finishing to the outsole than what you get on a standard pair of Allen Edmonds, and also they're using GR Rindenbach oak bark tanned leather outsoles, which is the highest quality uh, leather outsole that you can really put uh, on a factory made shoe, you see an open channel stitching, right? So this is the stitching that is used to go through the outsole and attach it to that welt, uh, but it's totally visible. It's not an invisible channel stitching like what you see here with the Carminas. Now again, most people are never gonna see the bottoms of your shoe, but if you're one of those people like I am that really loves shoes and really enjoys those more nuanced uh, aspects of shoemaking, uh, this in fact can be a big deal. But what I love about the Cordovan shoes from Allen Edmonds is that all of the materials that they use to make this shoe are of the highest quality. Between the genuine Horween Cordovan leather and the J.R. Rindenbach oak bark tanned leather outsoles, as far as the materials are concerned on this shoe, it's as good as it gets. One other difference with Allen Edmonds that's unique to all of their leather dress shoes is the six eyelets. Carmina, the Gaziano and Girlings, and these Foster and Sons all have five eyelets, which is a more traditional kind of English aesthetic but Allen Edmonds uses six eyelets, uh, which is more of an American style. Another aspect of Allen Edmonds is they have something called the 360 degree Goodyear welt, right? So all of these shoes, with the exception of the hand welted bespoke ones, are Goodyear welted. Now the reason that that is important and the reason you really want uh, to have a Goodyear welted leather dress shoe is that any high quality pair of shoes, the upper will outlast the outsoles uh, by several, several factors, right? So uh, a really high quality pair of leather dress shoes like these Cordovan ones or any of the ones we have here should easily last 20 years and you'll go through several outsoles and so you need to be able to resole the shoes without disturbing the upper and that's what Goodyear welting allows. Now with the 360 degree welting you see the welting doesn't stop right here at the arch. It continues all the way around the back of the heel and again this is just another element of the Allen Edmonds that you either love it or you hate it uh, but I think creates a slightly less finished look whenever it comes to the heel. You can see with the Carminas, and as you'll see with the Gatsiano and Girlings in these bespoke Foster and Son shoes, is that the welting stops right here at the base of the heel uh, and doesn't continue all the way around. And what that allows is for the heel base to sit uh, more cleanly uh, underneath the base of the heel. For someone that is looking to acquire a Cordovan pair of shoes, $695 is actually a pretty good value. It's hard pressed to find Cordovan for any less than this pair of Allen Edmonds. Now next, we're moving on to an English shoemaker. This is Gaziano and Girling, um, really well known for their updated English aesthetic. Now once you move to the Gazzianos, you get a slightly more fashion forward shoe than what you have here with these Carminas or the Allen Edmonds. You have their uh, updated kind of English aesthetic with their square toe. It's slightly more narrow. It's not as round as any of these. 
And you can see that Gaziano's and Gerling's craftsmanship really puts together a shoe that is beautiful. The balance and the aesthetic is really as good as it gets. Now, this is an Oxford, just like all of these shoes here, uh, but it's also an Adelaide, which refers to kind of the separate pattern piece of the facings of the laces. So this is set underneath uh, the quarters right here. So this is a, a Capto Adelaide Semi Brogue, and you can see it's got beautiful details here. Uh, of course, it is a Goodyear welted shoe, uh, but just like those Carminas, it has a higher stitch density uh, that goes all the way around. They're fudging the welt. It stops right here at the base of the heel. You can see with these $1,200 Gazzianos, they really take everything to the next level. So not only is the heel beautifully shaped, but the heel base sits perfectly underneath the shoe. It's tight, it's finished, it's dyed and polished. Uh, and then the bottom of the shoe is beautifully finished. They're using an oak bark tanned leather outsole and heels also, uh, just like these Cordovan shoes from Allen Edmonds. This comes from a tannery based in the United Kingdom versus one based in Germany, uh, but beautiful finishing. And then also Gaziano and Gerling's signature fiddle back waist. Now what that means is that with a pair of Gazzianos, not only do you have a tight, narrow waist right here, it's shaped even more to have a slight fiddle back that goes right here. Most people will never see the bottom of your shoe, but if you're someone that's into shoes and that really loves shoes, it's this type of more nuanced finishing that really just provokes emotion and makes people go crazy. That's why I love a Gaziano and Girlings. The last has incredible definition, and you can see that there's a high stitch density to the uppers. Of course, they're using only the highest quality uh, leather for the uppers. All of their shoes are hand clicked, which means that the leather pattern pieces are cut out by hand, which allows the person doing the cutting to position them around any blemishes on the raw leather. Uh, and then everything about the way that the, uh, the punching is done and the making is done is absolutely perfect. So the Gaziano and Girlings, for 155 pounds, you can uh, purchase a pair of their fully lasted shoe trees, uh, which if you're investing in a shoe like this, you absolutely would wanna do because the fit of this shoe tree is going to perfectly match the last the shoe was built around. And what that does is it just helps uh, prevent any type of creasing that may occur uh, as you wear these shoes. With this pair of Gazzianos, if you compare it to this $500 pair of Carminas, you can really see, again, that level of finishing. Not only do you have the invisible channel stitching like what you have with the Carmina, but you just see a degree of bottom finishing uh, that you don't get with these Carminas. Uh, everything about it is tighter, it has a narrower waist, you have the fiddle back, the heel is smaller and sits tighter uh, underneath the shoe, uh, and it's just beautifully done. $1,200 without question is a lot of money, making this pair of Gaziano and Girlings an investment piece. Next, we have my newest pair of bespoke shoes from Foster & Sons at 5,000 British pounds. These are exceptionally expensive. You back out the VAT tax, which is 20%, it's 4,000 pounds. In US dollars, that's about $5,300. Uh, and uh, this is, without question, uh, an investment piece for someone that is into shoes. What you get with the $5,000 pair of bespoke shoes is really that bespoke fit. With these three pair of ready-to-wear shoes, what you get is a factory-made shoe uh, that is made exceptionally well, but on a stock last. With these bespoke shoes, you get a handmade pair of shoes that are made on a completely individualized custom last that is carved around my foot. Now the last is the block of wood, or in some cases the block of plastic, that is used to build and shape the shoe. So all of the shape here and the fit is a function of how that last is designed. Now here, these were made by John Spencer, which is a last maker for Foster & Sons, who measured my feet, took all my measurements, and then carved a block of wood that was meant to approximate my foot and turn it into a three-dimensional shape uh, that they then built the shoe around. Now the difference is that this shoe fits perfectly. There's no extra room, there's no pressure points, it supports me under the arch, it doesn't bother you know, my cuneiform bone here at the top, uh, and it just fits perfectly. There's no excess wrinkling, uh, and it's just an absolutely perfectly fitting shoe. Now, in order to get that fit, you're gonna pay more, and it's gonna take more time, but if you're someone that really spends a lot of time on their feet or just loves shoes, bespoke, without question, is the zenith of footwear. 
Now, in addition to the fit, one of the other things you get with the bespoke pair of shoes, of course, is the handmade craftsmanship. So the upper is still being stitched together with the machine, just like these shoes, but someone is cutting and designing that pattern just for your last. You can customize or change anything about this shoe because it's being made just for you. The second thing is that instead of a Goodyear welt, what it has is something called a hand welt. With a hand welted pair of shoes, what they're doing is the shoemaker is going to carve a channel out of the insole and then through that channel they're going to sew the welt, which is that leather strip that goes all the way around. That is done completely by hand using locking stitches. And so what it allows uh, is a shoe that sits closer to the ground, is more durable, more flexible, uh, and is going to last longer than what you would get with a Goodyear welted leather dress shoe. Uh, in addition to the welt being done by hand, uh, the outsole is stitched uh, to the welt by hand also. And on this particular shoe, it was done to 16 stitches per inch. So these Allen Edmonds might be eight. Uh, the Carminas are probably 10 to 12. The Gaziano is 12. But this was done at 16 stitches per inch, giving absolutely incredible finesse and finish to the shoe. You see that it comes straight uh, from the shoemaker with more finishing. The heel, you can see, sits perfectly and incredibly tightly underneath uh, the shoe. Beautifully done. The heel block is made by hand, so each layer is built up. It's not a factory-made block. Uh, and then just the level of finishing, uh, again, is taking it to the next level. Now, one other thing that you get with a bespoke pair of shoes, especially at this level, is something that's called a fully lasted shoe tree where basically the last of the shoe is sent to a company that copies it and builds the shoe tree uh, to perfectly fit the shoe exactly using the same dimensions as the last the shoe was built around. What this allows for is just a greater level of fit so that the shoe tree does an even better job protecting the integrity of the shoe and preventing any types of wrinkles. One of the things you get with a bespoke pair of shoes is also an experience. Any of these ready-to-wear shoes, you're going to walk into a store, try a few pairs on, and leave. But buying or commissioning a pair of bespoke shoes is really committing yourself to a journey and an experience. Uh, you're going to have your feet measured, you're going to go back for fittings, and then you know that someone made these shoes just for you. So there really is just something special about owning a bespoke pair of shoes that just separates this shoe from any of these ready-to-wear shoes. Whenever I wear these Foster & Sons, I'm gonna think about the time I had my feet measured. I'm gonna think about all the time I went to go visit the Foster & Sons shop on German Street. And I'm gonna think about the craftsmen that I know made these shoes to the absolute highest standards. And that just is special for me. When shopping for a pair of casual shoes, a Capto Oxford Semi Brogue is a great option to have in any wardrobe. It's gonna add a little bit of versatility in terms of being able to wear during the week, perhaps with business uh, or on the weekend. Now the color of leather or material that you have that shoe made out of, of course, is going to have a dramatic impact on how it's worn, being former or casual. So whenever you're looking at a black cap to Oxford, it's easy to compare apples to apples. But the moment that we go from a black cap to Oxford to a brown semi brogues, we begin to see the huge variety of shoes that are out there. I mean, just within these four shoes, no two are the same, and they're totally different, yet still all being semi-brogues with relatively the same patterns. This isn't even taking into account the different materials that all these shoes are made in. I know that uh, Carmina and Gaziano and Girling, and of course with the bespoke pair of shoes, uh, all of these shoes can be ordered uh, through a made-to-order program where you can have them made out of almost any material. So this same shoe you may have uh, in this beautiful chestnut calfskin, but you might also have it made in a nice dark brown suede. So any of these shoes here uh, could be made in almost an infinite number of ways. When you're looking at the four shoes on this table and trying to figure out which pair of shoes is right for you, you really have to start with price point because let's be honest, that's where we all begin. And so here for $515 with Carmina, you get an absolutely exceptional made pair of shoes that begins to show some of the more nuanced elements of shoemaking that any shoe aficionado is really going to enjoy. Now, if you're someone that enjoys Cordovan uh, or really wants a, a low maintenance shoe, then for $695, you can get this pair of shoes from Allen Edmonds. Now, you're not gonna get any of the more nuanced kind of finesse that you get with the uh, Carminas or with these Gaziano and Girlings, but you do get a kind of a cult favorite material Cordovan 
for $695, which is an exceptional deal. Uh, and it's still made with J.R. Rindenbach oak bark tanned leather outsoles. Uh, this is a great shoe that'll last a lifetime. Now, if you're someone that enjoys a slightly more fashion forward aesthetic, or if you want those more nuanced elements of craftsmanship, then this $1,200 pair of Gazzion and Girlings is really an exceptional deal. They're made of the highest quality materials using the best craftsmanship. There's still a high degree of uh, hand finishing involved in the shoe. And it just creates a pair of shoes that's striking from a distance and people immediately know that you're wearing a high quality pair of leather dress shoes. Now, if you're someone that loves handmade craftsmanship, wants the best or has a difficult to fit foot, you can't go wrong with bespoke. There's no question that it's incredibly expensive, uh, prohibitively expensive. Uh, but investing in a pair of bespoke shoes, you're buying a pair that'll really last you the rest of your lifetime. With bespoke shoes, you get that custom fit and you get that handmade craftsmanship and the level of finishing that you can only find in a bespoke pair of shoes. However, if you're looking for a pair of shoes to arrive tomorrow, bespoke isn't the pair of shoes to go for because these took two years to make. Now, I hope you enjoyed this review of these four different Capto Oxford Semi Brogues. If you have any questions or any thoughts about these shoes or want to share with us your favorite pair of Semi Brogues, by all means, please let us know in the comments section below. Also, let us know which shoes you'd like to see us compare in our next video. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for joining me.